Putin and Xi are preparing for war amid public chatter about peace. Vladimir Putin's visit to China is presented by both countries as coordination of peace efforts, although in fact Beijing and Moscow are preparing to confront the West. The British publication The Telegraph writes about this, analyzing the first statements of Putin and Xi Jinping. In on-camera comments ahead of the closed-door talks, the two leaders talked about global stability and resolving conflicts such as the war in Ukraine. But when they sat down to negotiate, it became clear that it wasn't all about peace, The Telegraph said. The publication emphasizes that Putin brought, in particular, his new Minister of Defense, Andriy Belousov, to Beijing. But his predecessor, Sergei Shoigu, who was transferred to the Security Council of the Russian Federation, is also part of the delegation, together with the leaders of Rosatom and Roscosmos. Putin's visit to China highlights the rapid expansion of military cooperation between the two allies, which has caused concern in Western capitals. He and Mr. Xi have made no secret of their willingness to work together in a borderless partnership to reshape the US-led world order. The Telegraph writes, the publication recalls that Beijing refused to condemn Russian aggression against Ukraine and in turn feeds the Russian military industrial complex with the necessary raw materials and dual-use components. Meanwhile, Russia has consistently emphasized Beijing's support on issues related to Taiwan, which China has threatened to invade. In early May, U.S. intelligence warned the Senate Defense Committee about joint military exercises between China and Russia in the East China Sea near Taiwan. Avril Haines, director of national intelligence, told U.S. senators, China definitely wants Russia to cooperate with them and we see no reason why Russia wouldn't. Ahead of his visit, Putin told China's Xinhua news agency that the meeting would promote joint efforts to strengthen the territorial integrity and security of our countries as part of a strategic partnership of coordination for a new era. On the full scale of what this means for military and geopolitical cooperation, the two autocratic leaders are likely to keep the West guessing. The Telegraph writes. Man who shot Slovak PM belong to pro-Russian militarized group. The assassination attempt on Slovakia's Prime Minister Robert Fico was politically motivated, the TA3 News Channel reported. I do not agree with the FICO government's policy, said the shooter called Juraj Sintula as quoted by the television channel. He made this statement right after his detention, saying that he had opposed the government's policy limiting media freedom. According to the television channel, the man might have plotted the attack on the prime minister during the last month. The allegation that the 71-year-old writer Sintula, who carried out the assassination attempt on FICO, disagreed with the government's policy, was corroborated by his son. Let me say this, father did not vote for FICO during the election to the parliament. The man said, when asked by the Actuality News website, if his father hated the prime minister. He added that Juraj Sintula had never mentioned any intention to make an attempt on the politician's life. Meanwhile, Slovak media reported that FICO's security officers are to blame for the successful assassination attempt. The experts who commented on the incident said that the Prime Minister's bodyguards were a total fiasco. They believe that the incident should have been avoided, provided that those acted professionally in conformity with the procedure. Juraj Sintula, a 71-year-old man who reportedly shot Robert but FICO may be connected with Slovensky Branci, a pro-Russian militarized group. Investigative journalist Zabolx Pani said this. Pani tweeted two screenshots of Facebook posts by Slovensky Branci, which show the same man who made the attempt on FICO's life. Slovensky Branki is an unregistered paramilitary group that has been active in Slovakia since 2012. Journalists have reported the organization cooperated with the Slovak branch of the Night Wolves biker gang and its members who were trained by former members of Russian special forces. Slovensky Branki officially announced their dissolution in October 2022 without specifying the reasons why. Recall on the 15th of May, Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico was shot after a government meeting and taken to hospital. Russia began 
Himars style strikes in Ukraine. The situation is grim. Business insider. Ukraine's air defense problems allow Russia to launch Himars style deep strikes far behind the front lines. According to Business Insider, Russia has begun launching an increased number of drones beyond Ukrainian positions, obtaining intelligence on the positions of critical weapons and facilities. These objects can then become targets for attacks by guided tactical missiles. The enhanced presence of Russian UAVs allows Russian forces to pinpoint and destroy targets behind the front lines, senior fellow Jack Watling of the Royal United Services Institute in London wrote. Russia lost most of its drones for much of the war to strong Ukrainian air defenses, but Kyiv's air defenses are now vulnerable. Ukraine is trying to focus on intercepting missiles, aircraft and Orlan missiles that are wandering over the front line. Thanks to better targeting, Russia strikes behind the lines with Iskander tactical ballistic missiles and missile launchers such as the Tornado S system. These attacks are very similar to the Ukrainian HIMARS strikes. In recent days, Russia has managed to strike a Ukrainian Buck air defense system and hit two Ukrainian helicopters on the ground while refueling. There have been other notable strikes that Russia has long sought but rarely successfully carried out. Watling wrote, Russia was initially unable to carry out strikes like the Ukrainian HIMARS due to lack of accuracy, targeting capabilities and timely information. These strikes, as well as glide bomb attacks, further strain the Ukrainian army which faces constant depletion of resources. The changes come as Russia prepares the groundwork for a summer offensive that could put significant pressure on Kharkiv and areas around Zaporozhye before a push into the Donbass. Ukraine is waiting for additional assistance from its international partners to strengthen the increasingly weak areas of combat training, ammunition and industrial capacity. While Ukraine lacks equipment, Russia will begin to increase its advantages, Watling concluded. But there are things that only Ukraine can do. Watling said Ukraine needs to mobilize enough troops and create a training pipeline that would not only compensate for losses in its existing units, but also recruit enough units to manage their rotation on and off the line. This allows us to train troops and also rebuild reserves, he said. But if international partners fail to provide artillery, air defense, electronic warfare systems and other support, then Kyiv's forces will struggle. The outlook in Ukraine is grim. But with the right effort and support, Russia's summer offensive can be blunted, Watling added.